my name is Luke Geispieler, as he said. I'm a freelance cinematographer for feature films, television, documentaries, things like that. Um, that encompasses about half my life. Uh, the other half is spent as a writer, a husband, a parent of one, and finally as a purveyor of very large and difficult home projects. Uh, <laughs> Uh, one of which I'll show you in a moment. It's a seven-minute video that I brought along. Um, it's a project that I did about two years ago with my son, Max, that took us about eight months to complete off and on. Um, essentially, we built a spacecraft out of a cell phone, hand warmers, some foam insulation, and a Thai food takeout container. <laughs> it, it really had Thai food in it at one point, actually. Um, reaching the upper stratosphere at 120,000 feet, this homemade capsule could travel four times higher than a jet liner, photograph the blackness of space, the curvature of the Earth, and safely land again in an hour and a half. Uh, honestly, the two of us just did this project on a lark because we thought it would be fun to try. Uh, we didn't think much would come of it. People ask me all the time how I knew how to pull off this crazy mission without any engineering or science background. And all I can tell them is that I've done an awful lot of tinkering in my life. Ever since I was a boy, I build machines, save little motors and neat parts, combine junk to make new things, and taking things apart all the time, trying to understand how they work. As a matter of fact, as a kid, it really bothered me when I had to use a device in everyday life and I didn't understand how it worked. I found it really unsettling, actually, like I couldn't really use it properly until I knew. If nobody could answer my annoying questions, I'd end up taking it apart to find out. Sometimes it even fit back together and worked again. <laughs> my mom was pretty horrified by what was going on in my laboratory of a bedroom. Uh, being a pretty lousy student who was severely dyslexic and hated to read, I was the kind of a poster child for project-based learning. Uh, it was often the only way I could really learn something. I would often build things based on something that already existed, combining a couple neat devices into something new. Uh, this is the case with our broken space program. People had done things similar to it before, but hadn't combined some newer technology with some simple mechanisms in a way that would actually take it to the next step. As a culture, I, I think we undervalue the idea of building on ideas that are already out there. I think in the US, people are often trying to reinvent the wheel make their millions with some genius leap when they know full well that all ideas are just the next step in what already exists. The openness and democracy of the internet is an incredible asset in this regard of building on what's already out there, one we didn't have before and that our free society encourages, no matter who gets offended. The web certainly inspired us to do our space project and we in turn inspired countless others to do something fantastic. To date, our little space video was seen in over 150 countries by over 11 million people. Uh, we're always particularly delighted when our video gets passed around in places like China, North Korea, and Cuba. I got an email from one viewer that told us it actually convinced him once and for all that the US lunar lander was not a hoax. <laughs> Seriously. Up until then, he always had a, a twinge of doubt. This man lived in the United States, by the way. Um, I actually realized recently that my whole life has been a string of setting myself up to get knee-deep in a very large and lofty project. Once I sign on, it's actually set up so that there's little option to turn back and the only way out is to push through. Like trying to avoid telling your kid the thing they've been working on for months and believed in is just not going to work out. Or um, signing on to making a movie, for example, where dozens of people are depending on you to get up and, and in the morning and perform or by telling a bunch of friends the cockamamie idea you have and that you're starting it next week. You have to use that one sparingly, actually. <laughs> um, actually, for the Space Balloon Project, I hardly told anyone. I never fully believed it would work out. When we launched it with a couple friends of ours, I thought at best we had a 60% chance of ever seeing that contraption again. So we made sure to enjoy the process along the way. The project approach seems to be the theme of not only my life, but of my relationship with my son. Whenever I see a spark in my child's eye, whenever I see him motivated to do something, take on something new, I make sure to seize the moment, give him the encouragement and the tools I can, I can to start it. Even when it's during bedtime, when he often has bursts of inspiration. Uh, Max recently came to a studio shoot of mine and was busy not watching the monitor and the actors, like most people, but making his own little stop-motion film in the corner of the catering area. 
my very sarcastic producer walked up to me and said, it's nice to see you're not pushing your own interest on your son. <laughs> the fact was I hadn't. Uh, Max was into making films because he saw how much I was into it. Believe me, making a film was the last thing I wanted to do when I got home. But he saw me having fun doing something I loved, and he thought, I want to do that. And so he did. I think parents have an obligation to round out their child's formal education by showing them what they themselves love to do. Not only showing them what they love, but to show them that work and what you spend so much of your time doing for money can be enjoyed and a real source of pride, actually. This is the incredible fortune we have in this country. We can simply do what we want. Many of us have the freedom to earn what we need through doing what we love. We just have to find that thing. This is an incredible development in our world, and I hope it can keep spreading all over it. I think if we're honest with ourselves and we follow our natural interests, if we start projects that beg completion and don't worry too much about what it's all for or whether it's worth doing, if we take the first step of signing on and push on through, we can achieve things far beyond what we thought was possible. So without further ado, here's the film about the little spacecraft that could. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're here, and we've picked a spot across the Hudson where we think it would be good to launch. Steven's got the balloon inflating nicely, and we got the space capsule here, which is insulated and also helps it float. The return note, please return to Max Geisbuehler, big reward if found. We have hand warmers to keep it warm, which we've got to break out later. Here's the camera. Right in there. Oh. The iPhone in there that we'll use to track it. The parachute is right here. We'll put these little collars on there to keep it steady so it doesn't swing around. And then okay. we pray. So, Miles, does that look like we have everything? Ah, uh, yep. Yeah. Checklist. Plug in battery, start, cam, tighten zip ties, secure parachute. Oh, I'm good. Camera's rolling, GPS rolling. Check. Hand warmers inside, parachute secure. 14. Countdown. 10, please. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, blast off! Yeah,
Thank you.